Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Amanda, and I'm coming to you live from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And we are going to get ready to dissect a squid. Now, before we get started, let me give you a word of warning. Uh, if you are someone who gets queasy easily, you're okay. You can watch with us for a little while. Uh, we are not going to be getting into the uh, squid. We're not really going to open it up till at least another 15 minutes from now. So if you're looking through and you're like, I just only care about what's inside, then you might want to wait a little bit later because there's so much to discover and appreciate about this animal on the outside that we're going to take a close look at. But I think you'll find it very interesting uh, because it's not every day that you get to look so closely at such a unique animal. Uh, so as we're doing this, though, I do invite you to call in and text in your questions, I should say, to the number that you see right here, 562-286-1838. So as you follow along with us, we would love to hear any questions or comments that you have uh, that we can respond to live while we're doing the squid dissection. Now, if you are uh, checking this out later, after we've filmed it on YouTube, you can email us any questions you have at live at lbaop.org. So we will still be here to answer your questions. Um, we just won't be able to do it in the live format. So let's go ahead and get started. And I have, first of all, let me give you some background on this animal. Uh, we are going to be looking at a market squid. A squid is an animal considered a mollusk. It's an invertebrate, an animal without any backbones. If you were watching our class earlier, you should all be experts on that. Uh, but maybe my friend Emily, I have my friend Emily in the studio who uh, can bring up some pictures and show us the animal we're gonna be taking a closer look at. So this is the squid. And it also has some really interesting invertebrate relatives. Being a mollusk, it's a soft bodied animal. But most other mollusks we see, well, you can see this one right here is a soft body. And I'm kind of curious to know if any of you know what this is. Now, because we have a delay, I probably won't wait a long time. Uh, so I'll just come out and tell you. But if you know what this is, go ahead and shout it out to someone in the room with you. Uh, this right here is called a sea hare. Now, maybe you said sea slug. If you did, you're correct. If you said sea cucumber, though, sorry, that's an echinoderm. Totally different type of animal, not a mollusk. It does have a soft body, but it has other interesting adaptations that put it into a different classification. Uh, but this one right here is called a sea hare. Not hair as in on your head, but hair like as in a rabbit. So someone thought that this looked kind of rabbit-like uh, when they were discovering it. I don't know, maybe they spent too much time at sea. Not sure. Uh, but it does actually look very slimy and soft-bodied. So maybe like a rabbit body. I don't know. So it's sea hare. So that's one type of mollusk. It doesn't have any outside shell. It's got a shell inside. Um, but there are also animals like this. Now, this animal here, I know a lot of you are thinking, it's a hermit crab. Nope, it's not a hermit crab. A hermit crab is another type of animal. That's an arthropod. So crabs have jointed legs. And they are invertebrates, but they are not mollusks. So mollusks are soft-bodied animals. So what kind of soft-bodied animal lives inside and makes a shell like this? It is called a kellet's whelk. So this is a type of a snail. So snails are an example of a mollusk. And now keep in mind, when snails or any mollusk is born, it's born as a little miniature version of itself a miniature version of the adult, a little mini-me. So when this animal was born, it was like what you see right at the tip of my finger. When it hatched out of its little shell, it was this complete little uh, snail, little snail that looks very similar to this, but just much, much smaller. And then as it grows, it actually adds on and makes its shell bigger and bigger. Now, the soft-bodied part right here is all protected on the inside of that shell, but it's the shell being built by this animal. Uh, so different than a hermit crab that might take over the shell. When a hermit crab moves in, if the snail has died and left its hard shell behind, when it gets bigger, it has to find a new home because it doesn't have the ability to make any additions to this home here. Uh, so again, that is a snail, another example of a mollusk, a soft-bodied animal. So most mollusks have these shells on the outside of their body, uh, but there are some that do not. And I think we might even have a picture of another closer relative of the one we're going to be looking at. This one right here is a cuttlefish. Now, I know it sounds like a really cute name, like, oh, you want to cuddle with it. Not C-U-D-D-L-E. 
This is cuttle, C-U-T-T-L-E. So a cuttlefish uh, is what this is. It's not actually a fish, though. I guess we should call it a sea cuttle, shouldn't we? Uh, but anyway, this animal is more like a squid. You can see some similarities. It doesn't have the shell on the outside. It has this long body here. It has these long things here, arms, tentacles, got some big eyes. All right, and then there's also another interesting animal. Now, these are what we call cephalopods. Cephalopod means head, foot. So their way of getting around is attached to their head. So this is their head right here, and that would be like their foot and how they're getting around, right? Attached to their head. So that's what cephalopod means. So a squid is a cephalopod. A cuttlefish is a cephalopod. I'm going to give you a second to think about it. Oh, but we, we're giving you a big hint. <laughs> Can you think of another animal that is a cephalopod? That's right, an octopus. So an octopus is a cephalopod as well. Its arms attached to its head right here. Very cool animals. I know a lot of you probably uh, think octopuses are very cool and have some good questions about them, but we're going to focus in on the squid and what makes them so special. But we'll look at what makes them um, invertebrates. We'll look at what makes them mollusks. We'll look at what makes them cephalopods. Uh, so the cephalopods that I brought, I actually brought two with me. I was uh, lucky enough to grab them from our food preparation room. Uh, so I talked to our husbandry staff here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Our friends there were kind enough to give us some squid that, believe it or not, get delivered to the aquarium from restaurant suppliers because, not because we're feeding it to our guests, but because we're feeding it to our animals. Our animals get fed restaurant quality seafood, believe it or not, and it gets visually inspected before given to any of the animals as it gets prepared for them in the morning. And so I called them and asked if they had some squid uh, that we might be able to use for our dissection today. And so they were kind enough to give me two. So thank you to our husbandry staff for this. So let's go over to my camera and take a look at the squid that I have. So I might need to adjust my lighting here a little bit, make it a little bit brighter. So I've got two different squid here. And the reason I have two is so that you can see both sides of the squid at the same time. Now, I would love to, I don't know, have you, I wish I could have you make some observations and I could hear what they are. It'll take a while to do that. Uh, so as you look at that, I'm going to leave this picture up here and I'm going to take advantage of a cute little plush animal before my hands get all messy uh, to help us understand some of the basic parts of the squid first. Uh, so, when you look at him, you notice this long part right here. So, a lot of times if you draw a picture of an octopus or a picture of a squid, what do you think of as being the head? Oftentimes we think about this as being the head, right? Their eyes are up here somewhere and they have this big huge head. But that is not the head of your squid or octopus. Right down here, right between the eyes, is where the head is. So, this portion right here is the head of the squid. So what do you think all of this is then? So this long skinny part, if this is not its head, what do you think it is? Well, this right here is called their visceral mass or a mantle. So a mantle is the nice, like easy word to use, uh, but I like using the word visceral mass. If you think about an octopus and that big visceral mass that it has behind its head, it's basically like a big sack of guts. So it's like they're trailing their guts, like their stomach, all their reproductive organs, all that behind their head. Their feet are in front of them, their head's in the middle, and their sack of guts is behind them. Uh, so this is the mantle on the squid, is what we would call this. So this is the long part, the mantle, where all of their guts are going to be, not their head. Their head's right here. And so you can see two obvious eyes. They have very big eyes. Uh, what are some other things that you notice, though? I would love to hear... Um, some of your, your observations. Now, there was a question that came from Sage earlier. She said, uh, or Sage said, where are snail eyes? And that's a really good question. Um, it can be really hard to see. And I don't think on the pictures that we had, you can actually view any of their eyes. Um, and all the examples I have right here, like our abalone shell, uh, you can't really see where they would be. Their eyes would be up here up underneath the underside, but they do have eyes. They do have the ability to see, um, but most of the time it's very difficult to see. You have to get like just the right angle and have one who's not feeling too shy and not too hidden inside of his shell, but they do have them. It's not on their shell, but it's underneath their shell facing forward where they can see. All right, but here we don't have any problem locating the eyes of our squid. Now also look down here 
And think about, we said that the octopus has how many arms? Actually, we didn't say it, but I think you know already. How many arms does an octopus have? Eight. So my question for you is, how many arms do you think a squid has? Well, if you look at them, it's really hard to tell. So I'm going to help you out by coming over here and making it a little bit easier to see. So let's go ahead and count the arms together. We've got one. We've got a fly. Uh, two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven and eight. So just like his octopus cousin, uh, these have eight arms. But you might also notice, wait, there's, what are those two other things looking like spaghetti that are hanging down? I don't know if any of you know what they are, but these are what you might call tentacles. So there's actually a difference between the arms and the tentacles of our squid. Now, if I try to zoom in a little bit closer, maybe you'll be able to tell some differences yourself. So, and we even have a graphic that will show you that'll be a little bit easier. But first I want you guys to look and see what kinds of things you notice. So again, these are all arms. These two are the tentacles. And if you look at, I can try to get the little tips of the tentacles in there. You can kind of see what they look like. Um, let me help you out. If you're having a hard time figuring out, I don't know, how are they different? Uh, let's take a look at this graphic that we have, that a little illustration that will show. An arm of a squid is kind of thick, and it goes all the way, all the way to the end of the arm. Notice how thick it is. It has suction cups. Now, what's really, really cool about squid suction cups is they have little tiny teeth inside of them. So when they stick onto something, they basically have the ability to bite into it as well. So it's very different than the smooth suction cups on an octopus. So they don't have the teeth in them, but the squid does. So they have all these suction cups going all the way down to the end of their arm that have these suction cups uh, with teeth in them. And then the tentacles are actually much longer than the arms are. And I can't trace <laughs> this very well backwards. Uh, but this right here, this long part, oh, I got better. Uh, is called the tentacle. And it's long and skinny. Notice there are no suction cups on it. But there are suction cups, if you look carefully enough, right at the tip, at this little club end that they have. They have these suction cups with teeth inside of them. And I'll see if I can show you over here again, and we'll get back to that clip in a minute. Um, so here, I'm going to risk, you might not be able to see what I want you to see for just a second as I try to get closer, because I think we have a pretty cool zoom on this. So you can see they do actually have little teeny tiny suction cups on the end here. So can you kind of see those? A little bit of those little tiny bumps there. Maybe if I move this one over, let's see if it's angled at a spot where you can see it. Well, that one's a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, these have little tiny suction cups on the end. But if you move up the arm and you notice like this part of it, no suction cups. However, you might notice something else. Did you notice those little spots? Let's talk about those spots a little bit because those are pretty special. Um, but they're called chromatophores. But we'll get to that in a second. Let me first show you that illustration I mentioned earlier of the arms and the tentacles. the video that goes along with this. Yeah, we're going to try to pull that up. Sorry, I forgot it wasn't automatically behind it. So this right here is a cuttlefish. Look at this. Whoa. All right, so I want you to notice how they're using their tentacles versus their arms. Oh, that poor little crab. His moments are numbered. He's going to try his best to hide, but it may be to no avail because of this cephalopod here. Huh. So now do you have an idea why they might have arms and tentacles? Because my question would be, why not have just 10 arms or 10 tentacles? Why both? They must have some purpose. So their purpose 
is a little bit different. And you can probably tell me after watching that video how they use their tentacles differently than how they use their arms. Um, all right, so when they were grabbing their food, what did they use? Did they use their arms to initially grab the food or did they use the tentacles? Well, the tentacles, right? They're much longer so they can reach out a farther distance. But notice he didn't have them out long the whole time. They were kind of in and then they shot out really, really fast grab the food with those suction cups and those teeth right there on the end. And then where do they bring those tentacles? So they brought those tentacles and that food up underneath where all the arms are. Remember, there's eight of these. Notice how thicker, how much thicker they are than the skinny tentacles here. So these are really good for long reach reaches. These are really good for being strong and holding it in um, closer to where their mouth is. So let's take a closer look again. And did you notice how they changed color? I think that's one of the most fascinating things about that video is watching them change their color. They change their color with these things called chromatophores that you can see all over here. And it kind of distracts their prey and kind of mesmerizes them probably. I know it's kind of mesmerizing just watching them. Um, and so it allows them to grab their prey quickly and then use those suction cups and bring it up to its mouth. So you can probably guess where their mouth would be, right on the inside here. So right where all those arms come together. But take a look at all of those chromatophores. So these chromatophores allow the, change, the squid to change their color instantaneously. And it happens because they have all of these little, or they have all these muscles around them that can expand and contract these different pigmented, um, these chromatophores. So it looks like, according to this one, they all kind of look like a blackish color. But oftentimes you'll see, maybe if I move it over to this squid, you can see kind of some purple color, kind of purples and pinks in there. If I turn them to this side, you might notice something a little bit different, uh, but mostly dark, but they have pinks and reds, browns, uh, blacks are usually the colors that we see on our squid. And if they wanted to be all black, what they can do is open up the muscles around those chromatophores and you'll see a lot of black if they want or brown. And then if they want to close it, they contract those, bring them much smaller, and then you'll see more of this white color here. So they have control over that. And sometimes if we're messing around with it, we end up um, kind of breaking up some of those chromatophores as we're moving it and kind of breaking up some of those, those muscles around so it gets a little bit darker. But again, chromatophores. But let's zoom back out. We were going to look at the mouth, but... I also wanted to point out, I have these two different squid in two different positions. This one right here has this point above its head. Do you see that? <clears throat> that little point right there. This one does not. And that's because I have it flipped over on the other side. So if you look at my fins at the top of my squid, you'll see two fins. You're looking at the top and you're looking at the underside of the fins. Do you notice how this one has a chromatophores? This one doesn't on the underside. Kind of interesting. <clears throat> but this one right here, this point, is what gives the squid its kind of shape and its form. So it's not totally squishy, even though it doesn't have bones. It has something called a pen. And I'd like to show you what it looks like. Are you guys ready for this? It's kind of one of the coolest things about a squid. All right. So this pen goes the whole length of the, um, the mantle here. What I can do is take off some of this skin and I can actually pull it right out. Pretty cool, huh? So it's actually very thin. It might look green, but if I stand over here, <clears throat> maybe you can... Oh, it's actually, you'll see very well, it's clear. I can't show it to you because I have a green screen. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> All right. So I realized with a, a green screen behind me, it, it really is clear, so you'd see through it anyway. <laughs> but it is um, a clear, it's called chitin, is the material that it's made out of. So it's not bone, it's not cartilage, uh, it looks like plastic, but it's not plastic. It is completely organic, made by the animal. It's animal made, not man-made. Uh, but this is what gives it its structure. So now it has a much 
flimsier body without the pen in it. Uh, but it does have a very uh, stiff point to it. And you can s find this. This is along the dorsal side or the back side of, of the squid. Now, if I flip him over to the other side, where he appears to be lighter, but again, keep in mind, if this squid was alive, he could change his color. So this could be just as dark if you wanted it to be. But they have this really cool floppy thing right here. Now, this cool floppy thing is what we call a siphon. And if you can see how I'm holding it right now, it's like a tube. So if I take my pen, I could actually kind of put my pen inside of it. You see that? So why would this have a tube sticking out of it? That's a strange adaptation, a strange design for this animal to have this long pointy thing, no bones in their body, these suction cups all over it. Well, we figured out they use those to help them grab their food to eat. But why this floppy thing, this siphon? Why does it have a tube? Well, this is what the squid will use to help it move. While it does have fins to help it move, it can flap those around and move kind of slowly. It also has jet propulsion that it uses. And we're gonna show you a little illustration of that in just a second. Oh, I think we have it, yeah. As you look at this, this is pretty cool. They're actually bringing up the water up underneath their mantle. So the mantle has, oops, you won't be able to see it here. Uh, the mantle, they hold in all the water up underneath their mantle, and then they squirt it out through the siphon. So as they squirt the water out this direction through their siphon, what way is the squid going to go? It's going to go the opposite way, right? So they move using that siphon right there. They'll bring the water up underneath their mantle. So right underneath this big long part right here. And then they, then they can close it off. They have muscles that will bring it all together so that they squirt all the water out through the siphon. So they can move water out their siphon to help them jet very quickly away from things. Um, their fins help them move a, li a little but not quite as much as the siphon. But the siphon also has an opening for other things to come out. You can probably think of some other things that could come out of a squid. Could be um, waste could be ink. Um, those are the types of things that come out of that opening. Thank you. Uh, so I want to show you because we are going to run out of time if I don't quickly get into this. I did mention that we would look at the mouth. Right here is where their beak is. And if I actually reach in, I can pull this beak out. So the mouth of the squid is very different. Now if you look at this, you can see this long tube. You can probably guess what that is too. That is the esophagus. But this is a big mass of muscle, this buccal mass all around the mouth. So I'm gonna try to, this might not be so pretty, but I'm just going to pull this out. Just with my fingers. And there you can see the two different parts. Here, I'll, I'll try to clean it off a little bit better so you can see it. But on my fingers, maybe, you can see maybe, the two parts of the beak. So it's actually kind of clear with black tips. Let's see if we can, do you have any other video? Um, let's, let's just, one more time because it's cool to watch. Let's watch them eat one more time and see how they use their beak. All right, all right, so thanks for hanging in with us there. So you've got the arms surrounded or surrounding the beak and that beak is like the beak of a bird. It's the only hard part really besides uh, that long pen that's kind of on the squid's body. But now let's look at what's on the inside. So once the food travels from the mouth into the body, we're going to do a little dissection. This is actually the simplest dissection you could ever do uh, because all we do when you're 
wanting to look inside the squid is turn it so that it siphons side up so that we can see the siphon. That means both the fins are flat back against the plate. And you do a nice shallow cut right up through the mantle. Just like this. And then you open it like a book. And that is what the inside of a squid looks like. Now, you may have noticed right away when I opened this, you're like, oh my goodness, look, it ate a small little fish. But that is not a fish. <laughs> Believe it or not, every squid has one of these. This is what's called the ink sac. So this is what produces the ink that the squid would then use to squirt out through its siphon. Notice the location. It's right up above where this siphon comes together. And so it could flow right out through there. Now also, I want to point out these two things that are coming out to the side. Maybe if I change my lighting, it'll be a little bit more obvious. Uh, but these two things right here are really important to help the squid breathe. Now, if you think about the fact that they live in the water, they are invertebrates. Even though they're not fish, they use the same thing that fish use to breathe. What do fish use? They use gills. So these are the gills of the squid that they use to help them breathe. Remember, up underneath the mantle, all that water is coming in up here. And so those gills can get that oxygenated uh, water and then send it through the rest of their body by using their heart. Now their heart, look at this right here. You see this kind of yellowish blob here? That is one of their three hearts. They actually have three hearts right next to each other. Um, they have branchial hearts that will actually get the um, help move the oxygen coming from the gills through the rest of their body. Now, if you look at this, I want to actually open up this other one and have, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it's, it's a little bit different, but I'm going to open it up. Let's take a look inside of this squid and see if it looks the same. Ah, good. It looks different. Do you notice some differences? Ooh, let me try to adjust it. It is kind of bright. Here, that's a, a little bit better, I think. But look, this one over here on the left has this big white mass here and all this sort of yellowish stuff up here. It kind of looks like Vaseline, whereas this one is all white and it doesn't have this big white mass here. And I'd like to see if I can even zoom in. Let's see how powerful this uh, camera is. Maybe I'm asking too much of it. We'll see. Oh, you can kind of see. This one isn't quite as, it's maybe as beautiful and obvious as some other ones. Um, but what you're looking at here are the eggs. So this squid that I have on the left is a female. And the squid over here is a male. So these are his reproductive organs. And this, these are the eggs, but this is an important part for the female as well. This white mass here that we don't have on the male is what's called a nidamental gland. And so the squid will use the nidamental gland in helping harden her eggs and help packaging them up so that she can lay them at the bottom of the ocean floor. When squid lay eggs, they actually look what we actually refer to them as squid fingers. Uh, they look like they're long fingers and each one of these squid fingers has all sorts, has hundreds of these little tiny eggs um, that are fertilized. Um, from the male from the sperm. And uh, they deposit them all together at the same time at the bottom of the ocean. And they don't blend in very well. They kind of stick out like a sore thumb. When you come across them um, after squid have mated, you'll see all these big, it almost looks like white bushes in the bottom of the ocean. So it's a very obvious target for any predator. So after the squid mate, they die. And the adults basically sacrifice themselves for the greater chance of survival for their offspring. Because if you think about it, if you're a hungry predator, you come across these little tiny eggs or these big juicy adults, what one are you going to want to go after, right? Big juicy adults. Uh, so they sacrifice their lives for the sake of their offspring. Uh, so these squid will never get to know their children. These poor little baby squid won't know their parents. They'll be on their own from the moment they hatch. Uh, but I just did want to point out, again, those differences. Um, the, you can see the ink sac here, and if I do cut it open, I can even take my pen 
and you'll get to see some of that some of the ink come out doesn't have a whole lot of it in there but they actually did used to use uh, squid ink uh, for other purposes of well as, as ink honestly uh, not on a regular basis but fishermen would use it as they needed to so ah okay that is a harder question to show you on here so the question is, <laughs> where do squid poop from? Where is their anus? Well, it's actually, everything's going to end up being emptied out here through the siphon. Um, and I actually can't show you very well on here. Uh, it's hard to see on the female with this nidamental gland because um, she's kind of covering over some of, some of her internal organs. Um, but on the male, let's see. I actually have a hard time telling you exactly where that is. Let's see what, mm, I don't know. It's, so it's going to kind of blend in with this area. Here's the ink sac here. So it should be somewhere in this area that I'm looking at. So sorry, it's kind of hard to see. Um, and shoot, <laughs> we are out of time again. Uh, and I didn't even, one other really cool thing about the squid, when we were talking about the chromatophores, um, is that it's actually these chromatophores are in a very thin layer on the squid's body. So you can actually remove the chromatophores. If I pull this off, you can see I'm actually removing the chromatophore layer. It's almost like a clear layer of cellophane or, or clear plastic wrap that has all of the, the chromatophores on it. So this is the part um, so their body itself is actually kind of a, a clear kind of cream color and the chromatophores are just a layering over the top of it. Um, and let me just see. Um, real quickly, a question was, what's the difference between cuttlefish and squid uh, from Melody? And Melody, one of the main differences is uh, cuttlefish have a bone. It's kind of, it's kind of like a bone. It's not made out of the same material. It's a calcium um, Oh, what is the calcium bone and calcium carbonate bone that um, is inside of them. It's kind of long and wide on the inside and the squid only have this pen. So the squid don't have the same structure that a cuttlefish does. Also cuttlefish tend to have uh, uh, fins that come down the whole length of the body. So when we saw that illustration earlier, we were looking at the cuttlefish that was attacking its prey. Um, you can see those long fins kind of going along the body or along the mantle of the squid. Um, let's see, are there, question, are there more questions that I need to get to before we sign off? I realize uh, we are out of time. Um, well, if you have questions, I'll just come over and say, please. Ah, okay, let me come back over here. Question was, how can you tell the sex of the squid from the outside? Uh, well, it's obviously much harder to tell from the outside. You can tell for sure once you get it open. If you have the eggs up here, it's a female, the nidamental gland. Males just have uh, the cecum and the testis, testes up here. Whereas um, if you look at the outside, the males tend to have a thicker and wider um, uh, arms compared to the female. So notice that they're much smaller. Uh, males do tend to get larger than the females do. Uh, but I would say the tentacles is probably your best tip off to know that this is most likely a male because he does have thicker arms than the female has. Uh, but really opening them up is the best way to know. And obviously you can't do that when they're alive. Um, we do have some, we've had some big thin reef squid here at the aquarium in our tentacles and ink exhibit. And the males will actually get uh, these little dashes. Did I get that right? Sometimes I get them mixed up. The males have dashes and the females have dots. So on the outside of their body, even though they still have chromatophores, they tend to have like little spaces um, between these chromatophores that look a little longer, like dashes or more like spots, like little dots. Um, and so that's one of the ways that you can tell the difference with the big fin reef squid, whether they're male or female from the outside. But okay, we need to get going and I need to wash off my hands. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about squid uh, and these uh, interesting, fascinating animals that they are and some of the cool adaptations that they have. Uh, but we hope you'll join in again uh, tomorrow. We'll be having more programming and I would hold up my sign. But again, if you have questions, you can email us at live 
at lbaop.org uh, to ask any other questions you had. But thanks again for joining us and have a wonderful day.